I, I think that the, uh, the new president of South Korea, Madam Park, has very aptly characterized the present uh, regional situation in East Asia when she speaks about the Asian paradox. And as I understand it, she lectured President Obama for some time in the White House on the nature of that paradox. And as I understand it, and I, again, I think it's exactly right, the paradox consists of the fact that we're talking about a region that is booming economically. We have the first, second, and third largest economies in the world, the United States, China, Japan, plus uh, South Korea, which is now the 15th largest economy, plus uh, a lot of uh, emerging new powers, Indonesia, uh, India, uh, several countries in Southeast Asia. Uh, and this has generated an extraordinarily dynamic economic situation. So that's the good news, the, the booming economies. Now, the bad news are the, is, consists of and, and this is the other side of the paradox of the geopolitical tensions in the region. Uh, let me just enumerate them because they're very numerous and very worrisome. First, there is the inevitable friction between the rising power, China, and the dominant power, the United States, what Graham Allison of Harvard has called the Thucydides trap. The Thucydides trap has to do, uh, all of you historians will understand immediately, has to do with the origins of the Peloponnesian War. When uh, Thucydides explained that that war was largely caused by the, by the rise of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, Sparta and the, and the fear that this caused in, in Athens at the time. Uh, and accompanying this structural uh, problem in U.S.-China relations. There are specific issues uh, that I'm sure Ambassador Lord will go into. The, most recently, the cyber issue, uh, but uh, also a lot of economic issues. Uh, Taiwan remains uh, an issue. North Korea uh, remains an issue. So uh, that's number one. The, the what might be called the strategic drift uh, that many people are worried about in U.S.-China relations. And hopefully the recent summit uh, uh, has set in motion a process that will address that. Now the second major source of tension in the region is North Korea, which as Evans I'm sure will tell you in great detail, is determined to remain a nuclear power uh, with a capacity, uh, unrestrained nuclear power, uh, developing both nuclear weapons and missiles to carry them, and uh, has, has recently said that it is no longer interested in denuclearization and no longer even accepts the principle of denuclearization that it agreed to earlier in meetings in 2005 and 2007. So this has the potential not just to threaten North Korea's neighbors, but also to disrupt the whole proliferation, anti-proliferation regime uh, that we have constructed so carefully in recent years. The third problem are l these lingering tensions between Japan and South Korea, uh, the, uh, territorial issues, uh, and uh, uh, different views about uh, the, about the, the historical factor, uh, and uh, that uh, is a, a source of particular concern to the United States because those two countries are our allies, and we would like to see greater trilateral security cooperation, but this is on hold uh, so long as these tensions persist. Then, uh, fourth, there are these territorial and maritime issues uh, in the South China Sea and the East China Sea involving China and Japan, uh, and one set of frictions, 
China and several Southeast Asian countries, Vietnam and the Philippines particularly in another. Um, then there is also uh, what uh, many have come to call an assertive China, which is determined to protect what it calls its core interests. Uh, there is also, I would add to this list, an absence of any real regional security architecture, such as NATO in Europe, uh, plus uh, growing nationalisms throughout the region. So this is a very, very dangerous and very volatile mix. And uh, those of us with a sense of history are like to point to the fact that uh, we, we hope that uh, Asia does not repeat the experience of Europe in the 20th century, <coughs> when a combination of power rivalries, rival nationalisms, territorial disputes led to two very disruptive world wars, and we're still living with the consequences of that. Thank you.